Hey guys, Mr. Aguilar here. I hope you guys are having a good day so far. Um, I want to let you guys know that I'm posting the uh, answer keys to the assignments that you guys did yesterday. Um, and sorry if you guys can't see me, the lights just turned off over. Um, nevertheless, uh, we're going to kind of jump into this. You guys should have a handout that's going to give you uh, a front and back of one of them. And then you'll have another one that has just classwork and problems to try out. So I'm trying not to make this long but it seems like it's becoming longer than what I need to, and um, my apologies. So the good thing about this is in each part, it's broken into parts, and you guys have them on longer paper, so I'm hoping you guys can see that. And just kind of follow along the things that you guys are missing in each different part. I want you guys to be able to fill in. Um, the first part about this is being able to look at uh, the terminology that we're going to be using to describe this. Um, sine and cosine functions are different types of graphs. They are not uh, parabolic, they're not circles, they're not um, logarithm types. These are wave functions. So because the circle is infinite, we actually have a wave that kind of transcends um, and oscillates uh, up to infinity. And to understand that, we need to know the terminology. So you guys have the terminology part. Please label them, write down the definitions. Um, for the bottom portion of this, I prefer you guys changing this bottom port, part, excuse me, bottom part to a, a set of CD, which you guys are not used to. Um, we're going to refer to this in a different manner of just like you would any other function, H, K, H, K. So um, looking at the, the terminology for these. The midline is a line, is a horizontal line about which the function oscillates above and below. So it's kind of like the median between them. It's going to go, it can only go on top and bottom uh, equal distance from this. So the midline is very important. We get that from the vertical shift value from our K. So this is going to be very helpful for the midline. Um, the amplitude is how high the graph can get and how low the graph can get. Because it's a wavelength, we're going to be able to reach a maximum and minimum value that correspond to these. And we get that with uh, the amplitude value. Now the good thing about this is our amplitude corresponds to the A value, um, which also tells us something about the graph that if it's negative, it's going to flip that sine function. Um, it's going to flip the minimum and maximum values for it. And the last one is the period. The period corresponds to the B value. And it's pretty much telling us the length of one complete cycle. Because the graph of this is kind of weird, um, I'm going to be asking you guys to graph only one cycle of either sine or cosine. And a cycle of this tells me if I start out at zero, I go to a maximum, I go to a minimum, and start back up and go back to zero, this is one complete cycle. And if we do this one more time, and we go top, bottom, top, this tells me these are two complete cycles, so one, and then this other one will be a complete cycle for two. So we do want to reference that. We're not going to cover that material today, um, but when I do see you today, we're going to look at how changing the B value will change that period function, and looking at it will change the way we graph that function as well. So um, yes, pause it if you need to, copy it down. Um, the way that we're going to kind of do this next part is um, looking at how we graph sine and cosine, the basic, basic functions of them. And we're going to actually bring them from the unit circle. Um, because one full cycle, right, if we're talking about in radians, starts from zero, if we're talking about in radians, it goes to center position, goes all the way around, it ends at 2 pi, then our full cycle of one full period must exist between zero and 2 pi. So this is where the lines are existing for one full cycle of either sine or cosine. And so this is where we're going to kind of graph our functions from. Um, you guys know a majority of the points can be found on the unit circle. So if I ask you, can you tell me what cosine of, let's say, pi over 2 is, you should be able to tell me that, oh, well, pi over 2 is up here. So you're telling me this is 0. And that's essentially what we're doing at. But now we're going to plot our points that correspond to these. So looking at this part three, this is where the numbers come up. 
when graphing sine or cosine, we don't care about pi over 6, pi over 3, all the in-between values. They can be graphed. It would give us an accurate graph. But the ones we really care about are the ones that are representative of the 0, pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. The reason why this is easy, because we're given good values. We're given 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, 0, negative 1, and back to 1, 0. So if we can correspond those parts onto our unit circle, um, we're good. So the way that the parent function is graphed, given regular sine and cosine, we should be able to understand that sine of our graph corresponds to the, so sine of these, sine of t corresponds to any of the x values on the unit circle for any value. So looking at this, and let's say that this is 1, this is negative 1, that at sine of 0, our y value is 0. Then we're going to look at sine of pi over 2, because that's our next point, is going to be at 1, so I'm going to get a maximum. And we can correspond these points all the way across, with pi being 0, 3 pi over 2 is negative 1, and back to our zero. I'm going to get a graph that looks like an, a sideways S. It gets large, zero, minimum, zero. And again, these are just parent functions that I'm trying to graph for you guys. It's not super important where I get these. When I show you how to graph them, that's when they're going to become more important. Now for cosine, we're going to take the x values for these, and we're going to look at zero, pi over two, pi, three pi over two, and two pi. And again, Looking at our first one, we're going to get a maximum at 1. Then at pi over 2, we're going to get a 0 value. Then at pi, we're going to get negative 1. 3 pi over 2 is 0. And back to 2 pi, we're going to get 1. So this is the way that the parent function of one cycle of sine and cosine look like. Now all I'm using is on the x-axis, we usually label it from 0 to 2 pi. We can label it 1, 2, 3, 4, but it's easier to do it this way. So your graphs, how they are now, are going to be in terms of pi over 2, always. Um, we can split that up even to further to pi over 4, but we don't really need to, with these little half intervals being um, what we're going to kind of look at. But don't worry about that for now. The bottom portion is what we're going to look at. We're going to look at the, what's called this five-point method. And you guys do not have this on your page. But the really cool thing that we can look at is if we know the minimums and the maximums, and we know the intercepts, we can correspond those to points on the graph. And for this next part is how we're going to graph these functions. Now we're going to go into this a little bit more in depth, um, but we're going to split up the intervals, we're going to look at the period, we're going to shift up and down. But the main takeaway that we're going to look at is the sine and cosine chart, because if we can know that, um, we can graph our function. So, know that. So, here we go. This is extra. This is just a further explanation of our function. <coughs> and now we're at part five, which is the back side. So, kind of going through this a little bit quick, but I'm hoping I'm not um, freaking you guys out. You guys do want to copy down this portion, I'm leaving you guys the definition of what the amplitude does. This is part five. And you guys are going to go ahead and copy down these functions. To me, it's easier to start to graph these. I use what's called the five-point box method. And the reason why I call it the five-point box is if I can graph this function in a box, I'm going to be able to split it up and to graph it fairly simple. And here's what I mean by that. The first thing that we want to be able to do is show where the midline is. Show me where the line will oscillate. And the way that we do that is by our k value. So looking at the k value for this, the k value is simply 0. So the line of the 
x-axis is going to be what we want to be able to look at. The next thing that I want to be able to do is see the maximum minimum values that it can take on. And the way that we get this is looking at our a value. The a value happens to be 3. And what we're going to do from these points is we're going to go ahead and graph above 1, 2, 3 and below 1, 2, 3. I'm going to scale this so it's correct. And, there, and so this is going to be where my graph will oscillate from. I know I'm going to, it can only be within these two values. Okay. Now, the good thing about this for the time being is our B value happens to be 1. So the period for the function is 2 pi over B. But since B is 1, we're just going to get 2 pi. So the interval for which one cycle must occur is going to exist between 0 and 2 pi. For all of these, these are where they're going to be between. Now, I'm not too worried about what's going to happen, but um, one full cycle, meaning a minimum and maximum, is going to start at 0, and it's going to end at 2 pi. And I'm hoping you guys are seeing where this box is coming in from, because the box is going to be the endpoints for these. Okay. Now, I know where my graph must exist between, and I'm hopefully going to explain this a little bit easier for you. But the five-point method is simply coming from our values for sine, the five-point method. Because our interval is split up in this way, we're going to split up our box into five equal parts. So we'll split it pi into half. We have a beginning, we have an end. Then we're going to split up our interval into half of those. And what we're going to do with these is now we're going to correspond the A value. So going back to the A, because the A is positive, that tells me I'm going to have a maximum first and then a minimum. So these are how we're going to graph them. The starting point tells me for my sign is going to be zero. My next point that it's telling me is going to have a maximum. So I know halfway through that, I'm going to have a maximum value of 3. Let me change this one to another color. The next one tells me my third point is going to be a 0. My fourth point is going to be a minimum, so I'm going to go down. And then my final point is going to be a 0. So this is how we want to be able to graph our function using the box five-point method. So if we scale this correctly, it looks like the first one, but I scaled it a little bit differently because of our um, length and our ability to graph our functions for these. Okay, so that's how I want to be able to do it. So if we do cosine now using the same kind of idea, the A value is 1 half. Okay, now with that A is going to tell me I'm going to have a max Mum first, and then min, and then max. So I'm going to oscillate between those. In our other example, it's going to be different. It's going to have a negative, so it's going to be min, max, min. The next thing I'm going to go ahead and do is find the midline. Our midline, the k value is 0. So looking at this, because our midline is 0, I'm going to kind of graph this out. Our midline is 0. The amplitude, let's go, if I make this 1 and I make this negative 1, then the amplitude can only exist between 1 half, half of 1. So we're going to do that. So it's only going to become large by 1 half. So this is 1 half above the midline, 1 half below the midline. The next thing I want to be able to do is find our period. Period is equal to 2 pi over b. But in this case, our b is 1, so we're just going to get 2 pi. So the interval is going to be 0 to 2 pi. So this is going to be where my first line is going to be from 0. This represents here. The 2 pi is going to be the last part of this. This is the box, 5-point box method. 
I have my box and I'm gonna go ahead and split it into five equal parts, splitting this down evenly from zero or from pi over two or pi, pi over two and three pi over two. We're now gonna follow the cosine directions. The first starting point tells me, let me do this in the opposite. The starting point tells me I'm gonna have a maximum. Our maximum can only be one half. The highest I can get is one half. The next point for us is gonna be a zero. Our third point is gonna be a minimum. Our fourth point is gonna go back to zero. And our fifth point will be a maximum, which again can only be one half. We're gonna connect our points. It doesn't need to be perfect. But this is what the amplitude does. So this is practicing this. Okay. So this is part six. So we're gonna use this method. If you guys wanna pause it and try these problems out, by all means, please do so. I'm gonna go ahead and graph these fairly fast just because we're about halfway done and I feel like I'm talking a lot. We have a sine function, so I'm gonna follow my sine uh, box here. A is four, so it tells me I have a maximum, then a minimum second. My midline is gonna be at zero. And I'm gonna go ahead and label this. I'm gonna start with four on top, four on the bottom, negative four on the bottom. The period for this is never gonna change for the time being, so I'm still gonna write zero and two pi. And I'm gonna go ahead and use my box method to um, put my equation in with the midline going through the center of this. I'm gonna split the box up into five equal parts being the middle first and splitting up the halves of those. This tells me my five point method is gonna start at zero. My second point is gonna be a maximum. Third point is gonna be a minimum. Fourth point is gonna be a minimum or zero. Minimum, sorry. And then we're gonna go back to max. So this is what the function is. Again, a value in this case for cosine is negative two. The period is gonna be zero and two pi. Our midline is zero, so again, doing the same kind of methodology. Midline is zero, that's my first one. The amplitude is still gonna be by two, so I'm only gonna go up by two. So it's only gonna be between, if I make them this way, this will be two, four, two, four, negative four, negative two. Now, because my A value is two here, it's gonna be opposite. So I'm gonna start out with minimum, then max, and then minimum. And now we split up the interval. We split up the interval into five equal parts. So halfway through this, I'm gonna get my third, and then split that up. We're gonna get five equal parts. So here we go. The directions tell me for the cosine is gonna be a minimum value first. So I'm gonna start out with a minimum. My next halfway point is gonna be a zero. My third is gonna be a max. My fourth is gonna be a zero, and my last will be a minimum. If we're graphing the function, one full period of a negative two cosine function, which if you kind of remember, the other way would look something like this. This is the standard, this would be two cosine of x. For that value. This is, again, it changes because the orientation of the A value. Let me kind of erase that for you guys. So this is part six of that function. So hopefully it makes sense. I'm hoping this does, um, but if not, we'll catch up on Monday. The part seven to this is being able to shift. And this one's fairly easy. Um, so copy this down, copy down your parts. And we're still breaking this up to the same kind of idea. We're gonna look at um, graphing sine and cosine 
using the uh, five point method. The only difference now is the um, changes in the minimum or maximum. And just to kind of keep this even, I'm gonna do this by one, two, three, four, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. Just to kind of keep this orientated, those same points are gonna kind of correspond to the other ones. So here we go. I'm gonna to try to finish this up for you guys. <clears throat> Summing this out, our A is one. This tells me for my sign is gonna be a, min a maximum than minimum. Now the K value for this, HK, tells me that I have a vertical shift up by two. So my midline is now gonna start at two. If we do it to the other one, where A is one again, the K value for the cosine is negative three. So that tells me I'm gonna go down three, one, two, three. So this is where the, the line is gonna oscillate from. So going back to sine, and again, because our A value is one for cosine, sorry, we're gonna have a max, min, then max. Okay, so sorry. So let's kind of get back to this, just kind of show you what I'm gonna do for the midline for this. The amplitude is only gonna go up and down by one from our midline. So this is gonna be the following. And even for the other one, for cosine, it's gonna only oscillate between one. Because our A value is one, it's only differentiating by one for these values. Same thing with this one. The midline is th negative three, but the amplitudes for these are only one. We are going to break this up into five equal parts. Okay, that's our five equal parts. Even for cosine, we have five equal parts doing the same exact thing. And we graph sine again. So sine tells me I'm gonna have a zero, maximum, zero, minimum, zero. This is kind of squished a little bit just because of the way we scaled it. Cosine is gonna do the exact opposite, right? We're gonna start with the max, min, max zero min zero max this is again going to kind of have this u looking type of graph for this type of function so these are what the two functions look like pause it and go back um, towards the values part eight is now doing the same kind of thing but now we're shifting everything down so i would like for you guys to try this hopefully this will make sense um again helping you guys out I'm telling you that A in this case is one, A in this case is one as well. So we're gonna have, because A is one, we're gonna start out with a maximum to minimum because these oscillate. Cosine is gonna be a maximum minimum max. So graph these from there. And I'm gonna kind of do these fairly quick because I know what I'm doing. My midline for my sine is at negative three. One, two, three. My A value is between negative one and one, so I'm gonna go up one, down one from the midline. Splitting up my intervals to half, half of those, half of that. This is gonna give me min, max, min, uh, sorry, min, max, zero, min. Function will look like. Again, these periods are still gonna be the same. Our B is still gonna go from zero to two pi, so we don't have to worry about that. It is important that we put that in. I don't know if I put that in the other problem, but my apologies. The next one, I'll do it in a different color, is telling me a Y or a K value of up one. So I'm gonna oscillate. I'm gonna go up one and down one from that line of oscillation. I'm gonna split up the interval now. Half, half of those. He's giving my five points. I'm gonna do maximum, zero, minimum, 
zero, max. So these are the easiest way to kind of graph these functions. So there you guys go. Hopefully you guys are getting this, okay? The next one is using the combination. So this is kind of like the ninth part. So this is on your new piece of paper. We're only gonna do these ones fairly quick um, because we need to be able, I, I just wanna see, show you guys what we're gonna do. Hopefully you guys are gonna use the upper portion to us. I'm, I'm gonna kind of stir away from this. So you guys have this on the other page. So use that as a reference for your values. Um, so here we go. The, a, the, the midline, so I'm gonna kind of show these ones and then you guys have uh, practice that you guys can do and try out uh, for these. The first thing I'm gonna do is the midline. The midline for these is crucial. I'm gonna create my box for me first. So the midline for this is at two. So I'm gonna to go to two, I'm gonna do my midline. This is the midline, this is in my value of two. My period for this is again, period's gonna be equal to zero to two pi. So I know I'm gonna have a box around zero to two pi, and this will change depending on what B is, but I'm okay with not doing that. Oops, I gotta make sure that I'm doing this right, sorry. We get the two value is gonna tell me my amplitude. So I'm gonna go up two and down two to help me create my box between zero and two pi. I'm gonna split up my box into five equal parts. And I'm gonna use that chart in order to help me graph this out. I'm gonna get a, a value of two, so this is gonna tell me max and then min. So I'm gonna go zero, max, zero, min, zero. for my function. So that's how you wanna be able to do this type of graph. I'm hoping this makes sense. Um, but again, find the midline. From the midline, use the amplitude to go up and down by whatever value you have. That's gonna create a box, split the box into five equal parts, and then use your chart to graph. For cosine, we're gonna go down three. The midline is gonna be the first thing we're gonna graph. Let me show a different color for this. So midline for this is gonna be at negative three. So negative three, one, two, three. So midline is gonna go down three. We're gonna go, our midline is gonna start here. I'm gonna do this how I perceive these problems. So. If I label this one, two, three, and four, there's gonna be a very, very skinny graph, so my apologies. But I'm hoping this makes sense. From the midline, we're gonna find the A value. The A value happens to be one half. So it's gonna tell me I'm gonna have a max, min, max. So very skinny graph. I'm only gonna go up a half and a down a half. This is gonna create a small box or a very skinny small graph. This is, if I can label this, this is one half up. This one is one half, negative one half down. From this, we split up the graph evenly. And following the same rule that we've been doing, we kind of make it stand out. We're gonna do the cosine, which tells me I'm gonna have a maximum first, zero, minimum, then max. Let me kind of zoom in for you guys to see. So that chart tells me I have a max, zero, min, zero, max. So it's gonna be kind of super oblong, but my apologies. Okay. So as you can tell, these are the two different types of graphs to, that you're gonna look at. Um, Everything has been between zero and two pi, so we can still put that in. But the box is gonna come from this. So this is the start of the box, this is the end of the box, okay? So the bottom of those is what I want you guys to try out. And I've given you guys six problems to kind of try. 
If there's no value inside the uh, air, uh, angle, you don't need to worry about it. Um, but you have your H and K for these values. So part 10 is the classwork and what you guys have in front of you for yourself. So I'm going to show you just a quick example of what I'm looking for for work. Pretty much graphing everything out as you guys see them. I'm going to graph the midline. Midline is at one. The amplitude is one half. So I'm going to go up one half and down one half. This is going to help me graph my box. My period for these is going to be 2 pi over b. In this case, our b is 1, so 2 pi over 1 is just 2 pi. So I have one full cycle existing between 0 and 2 pi. Again, we don't need to worry about that. We're going to split it down the middle. And what we're going to do is we're going to graph this by doing 0 max, 0, min, max, or sorry, 0. So I'm just going to be a little oblong, but my apologies. So that's what I'm looking for what you guys should have. Please try these other problems. We're going to kind of go over them on Monday. Sorry for that, such being a long time, guys, but you guys have a good weekend. Take care. Bye, guys.